And plans should therefore be stored in paper form or offline and include information about how teams will communicate without work email and other analog workarounds. It seems that in 2025, we are going back to analog systems for both privacy as well as cybersecurity reasons. Would you recommend writing your passwords in a book like this? So as an example, would you recommend that your mother or grandmother write down their passwords in the personal internet address and password logbook? It says here, keep your favorite website addresses, usernames and passwords in one easy, convenient place. And then they have a warning, which is good. They say, stop and read. The internet password and address logbook is meant to organize your usernames and passwords in one convenient place. As this is sensitive security information, it is advisable to keep this book in an extremely secure place. It's not recommended for travel use, but rather for use in the home and preferably kept in a hidden or discreet place. It is recommended to use different usernames and passwords for each internet site and to change your passwords frequently. And then they have a disclaimer. Please note that the publisher cannot be held responsible or liable for any consequences, losses, or damages as a result of the user containing and storing information in this book. They even have home network setting information, such as your IP address, etc. So would you recommend using this or not? This video is sponsored by Delete Me. If your weekend plan is to manually opt out of 200 plus websites, you're more than welcome to do that but I simply don't have the time or energy to do that. And another big issue here is that data brokers will republish profiles. So your do-it-yourself work never ends. Now, the great thing about Delete Me is that it verifies where your information actually appears and then submits removals to get that data removed and then gives you a privacy report so you can see the progress of those removals. They also have ongoing monitoring so listings don't just magically reappear but are constantly monitored and removed. Now it's important to note that Delete Me is not going to wipe all your data off the internet. You're not going to be 100% invisible or anonymous online but it helps protect you from scams, doxing and harassment. Get 20% off Delete Me's consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com forward slash Bumble and use promo code Bumble at checkout or use the QR code on screen. That once again is joindeleteme.com forward slash Bumble code Bumble. I've previously spoken about how hackers broke into washing machines on a university campus and allowed students to wash for free, but then management refused to give students access, so they had to resort to only a few analog washing machines, which caused all kinds of problems. We've had situations where exercise bikes or treadmills, as an example, force you to get a subscription if you want to continue using the device. So the device is essentially bricked if you don't pay a monthly subscription. This has happened with home automation systems and other systems. I think the world is moving to a very dark place where you have to have a subscription to use a device. Think about heated seats on a BMW, you have to pay a subscription. Think about other situations with cars where you have to pay to get the full acceleration of the car. That is really crazy. The devices have this functionality, but you have to pay a subscription to access the functionality of the device. From a privacy point of view, this kind of stuff is a nightmare because they are monitoring what you're doing. Think about televisions like Samsung, who are monitoring everything that you're watching and then trying to sell you advertising or their fridges, which now want to run ads on them, cars want to run ads on them, privacy nightmares. Then we've got the cybersecurity risks of all of these devices being connected to the internet and them being hacked. And then they just trying to squeeze more money out of you every month. You're going to end up with all these subscriptions where the service is degraded. So think about Netflix as an example. There are many examples like this where you're paying for a service, but now suddenly you have to get that service with ads or spend more money we are moving, it seems, to black mirror type setups where you have to pay more money to get rid of the ads. Or you could move up to our exciting new tier. It's actually the reason that we have extended sleep mode for our non-premium users. Or premium users. Well, plus is actually now standard, but it is better than common. How much does it cost? It's just an additional $1,000 a month. Oh, sweetheart, you'll want to watch your head. But it's also a massive security risk because hackers can hack these online devices, use them in botnets, or simply use them to hack you. Now, what's really interesting is that companies are being advised to put their information on paper. In other words, on a book like this. 
This is from the BBC. Cyber attack contingency plans should be put on paper, firms told. There's been some high profile attacks recently, as an example, at Jaguar Land Rover factories, where the UK government is now having to give them money to keep them afloat. And we're told people should plan for potential cyber attacks by going back to pen and paper, according to the latest government advice. The government has written to chief executives across the country, strongly recommending that they should have physical copies of their plans at the ready as a precaution. This warning comes from the National Cybersecurity Center, or NCSC, which reported an increase in nationally significant attacks this year. Criminal hacks have taken place on Marks and Spencers, which is a very large retail store in the UK, as well as the Co-op, another very large retail store, and Jaguar Land Rover. This has led to empty shelves and production lines being halted as companies struggled without their computer systems. So the National Cybersecurity Center has said that organizations need to have a plan for how they would continue to operate without their IT and rebuild that IT at pace were an attack to get through. Firms are being urged to look beyond cybersecurity controls toward a strategy known as resilience engineering, which focuses on building systems that can anticipate, absorb, recover, and adapt in the event of an attack. So perhaps it's not such a bad idea that your grandmother or your mother or another family member write their passwords down on this rather than storing it on their computer in a text file as an example. Now you probably know this already that these types of cyber attack contingency plans are not new, but it is notable that the UK cyber authority is putting the advice prominently in its annual review. Now they've dealt with 429 attacks this year, which is similar to last year, but there has been an increase in hacks with a bigger impact. The number of nationally significant incidents represented nearly half or 204 of all incidents. Last year, that was only 89. They have a characterization model like category one is national cybersecurity emergency, category two, highly significant event, and then it goes on and on. But the issue here is that there are more and more attacks that are affecting the entire country, such as Marks and Spencers being attacked, or big companies like Jaguar or Land Rover being affected by these attacks. Now, what about cloud backups and cloud storage? Microsoft is trying to force you to move all your data online, and then they run their AI on your data. So it seems like just storage of data, you need to move to an offline solution using a local NAS or doing something else, but don't allow these companies to move all your data into the cloud. And then it begs the big question, who actually owns the data, you or them? So the world is moving to a very dark place. Unfortunately, I think it's time to pull things back, use analog or offline systems, not just for cybersecurity, like is being recommended here by the UK government, but also just for privacy reasons. These online systems put you at risk because they can be hacked, but who actually controls those devices? It's not good to see where the world is going, but perhaps I'm wrong about this. So question for you, would you recommend, or do you write your passwords in a book like this? Or do you use an online password manager as an example? What would you recommend that your family do in 2025? Or what should organizations do in 2025? I want an offline washing machine. I want an offline fridge. I don't want IoT devices that are connected to the internet where I'm forced to pay a subscription or where they can be turned off or hacked. But what are your thoughts?